to Thrift Store Makeover. Cue awesome title. Thrift Store Makeover. Oh yeah. This is the series where I take sculptures from the thrift store, kind of like this really derpy dragon, and try to turn it into an epic sculpture of amazingness. In previous episodes, my only rule is pretty much keeping the entire shape of the real sculpture and just adding onto it to make it nicer. Vocabulary number one. I think my favorite thrift, 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 thrift store makeover. Please English talky talky today, please, please. My favorite has got to be turning a really ugly bunny sculpture into a dragon playing the guitar. And as you can see, I really did use the same shape and just added onto it. Let's honor Mariah Elizabeth by having uh, sculpture roasting. Yeah. Sculpture roasting. Where do I even begin with this roasting? First of all, what are those wings? They are so stuck together that you can barely tell if it's just a really big hump or an actual pair of wings. I know you want it to be something awesome, but even the position that your legs are in kind of make me think that you're a seal, not a dragon. So obviously there's an identity crisis over there. And your eyes are so close together that even your facial expression looks pretty shocked. You are so derpy that even the person named Vic from March 2015 decided to send you to the thrift store. But worry not, little derpy dragon. I love you enough to help you be the best that you can be. All right, so here's the thing. This sculpture is probably one of those sculptures that were made at like a cafe where there's multiple of the same kind of sculpture and you just get to modify the color. So it is made out of ceramic, glassy type ceramic. And a really big part of me really doesn't like the fact that the whole muzzle thing over here is huge. This makes it so that modifications are going to be very challenging. For those of you new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, otherwise I will wave this sharp pointy thing at you. Or a scissor. Ah, both. Don't make me use it. Alright, so since the, uh, what, the, the thing, it, uh, hang on, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting, ow. <laughs> I'm not gonna lock the under part because I'm not okay if I can't breathe for long periods of time. So I need, I need, I need space. So since this is a very smooth surface, I need the clay to stick onto it. So I will be using a sanding paper and making tiny little scratches just enough so that the clay and the liquid clay are going to adhere to it. My biggest worry with this is that even though the proportions look okay here, once I start dabbling to making it look like a more evil creature of darkness dragon, it's still going to look like a cow for some reason. Like the ones in Harvest Moon that look like this, that are kind of round and chubby and chibi and cute. So a big part of me really wants to take a hammer to this. Oh, hammer? No. I said no! Get! That's what I thought. Because if I were able to take a hammer to this, what would be the challenge, right? So anytime you grains want to do a sculpture makeover, make sure that you do use liquid clay. Otherwise, the clay is going to have a hard time sticking onto it. Let's start with the face. Oh my gosh, that looks so wrong. <laughs> That's not on purpose. And so as I started to sculpt the dragon, the face started to almost take its own shape where I put a kind of mohawk on top just to hide, you know, the part where the derpy eyes used to be. Yeah, those derpy eyes, get out of here. And so I figured it would only make sense to match the top part with the bottom part. Kind of like those lizards that can put out their neck flaps. What are those lizards called? You'll see one on the screen. And I have to say, I really love this look. Yes, it could look like a rooster, but that's not what we're going for. The only thing I realize that bothers me is the fact that the head of the original sculpture is looking downwards, which means that even though my dragon looks cool from this angle, the fact 
fact that the neck is tilted downwards, we're going to be forced to make it gaze upwards at the sky. For those of you who don't know, the material I'm using is called polymer clay. Think of it as Play-Doh, but once it's baked, it becomes permanent, kind of like a statue. So for the person who designed this dragon, thanks for nothing. Look at me. Thanks for nada. Nothing. Look what you're doing. Proud of yourself? Actually, good job, because I could probably not design something like this. And so in order to give the face a little bit more shape, I'm going to start giving the bottom lip a little more of an indent. And I definitely don't want the horns to make it look like a cow because you know, worst case, if it really does look like a cow dragon, then we're just gonna roll with it. But for now, let's do our best. To admit so far I'm loving the way it's looking it's a lot more dragony lizardy type and a lot less cow which is a good thing <laughs> now what I'm really worried about are the eyes because the eyes are the windows to the soul but at the same time I feel like having a glass eye really would add to her look something a little more fantasy ish I'm just undecided where I want it but it's definitely not gonna be in the front let's look at those front derpy eyes again yeah no I said get out so as I usually do I take a flat back cabochon and layer different kinds of paint to make different eye effects and one of the products I recently started using and I'm really liking which is very similar to the nail polish for a sprinkly type effect is this alcohol ink called rainbow pretty cool <laughs> what the eyes look like and let's start with the snaky type actually this is the less snaky one isn't it I can't remember and ooh I'm not sh you saw nothing let me go get it. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna use this one, there. And here it is. This is really cute. I'm not too crazy about the fact that I put the glowy part before the black, because usually I put black and then glowy, but it's not too bad. And this one here is going to be the snaky type eyes. Ooh, ooh, I like that a lot. You see, the glowy part is not where the black part is. And yeah, don't mind my fingers, it's clay and things, okay? If you don't like it, Come here, bite me! Come on! And the other snake type. Yeah, that is cute. So now the question is, which set of eyes work better? The ones that I really like? Hmm, I don't think so. Or the other ones that I feel meh about? Can't even tell. Let me know in the comment section below which one would you have taken? The uh, triangle one or the snake looking one? Not, still not quite sure. Maybe I'll have to make another one. I'll try a third one. A few minutes later. So I decided to settle on this one in this angle. So far so good. I feel like it could either be an ancient dragon granny type that's just gazing on the stars or it could be a baby dragon with cute little eyes and no teeth yet. Which brings me to my next dilemma. Teeth. Do I put some on or not? Because this is what it looks like without teeth. And if I wanted to add a fang, this is what it would look like. Which I kind of like. Let me know in the comment section below. Would you have put a fang or not? I think I'm going to put this one and just one on the other side and that's it. Because I feel like this dragon is probably vegetarian. I don't know why. Because it doesn't have an evil, evil mouth with a jaw. <laughs> Now that the teeth are in, the only thing I want to do now, because I am so paranoid, is I want to save my progress. And the best way to save your progress with polymer clay is to bake it. So, since we never know what's gonna happen when it bakes, let's put our hands together and pray to the baking gods. Dear baking gods of evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and fallen limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff! And so now the question is, have the baking gods forsaken us? And the answer is no. 
<laughs> I am really happy and kind of surprised that they didn't forsake us too much because I thought that maybe these horns here would have fallen off or at least bent downwards, but no. So far, so good. And I say I love it when things go good. Now when it comes to the wings, let's look at them again. Yeah, they're, they're kind of pesky and puny. I really don't have much space to do anything because there's really just my finger width from the distance of the head. So I can't really extend it unless it looks really awkward. So what I'm going to do is just take my clay and start giving it a little bit more shape rather than having it flat. And of course, as always, we're going to be using liquid Sculpey to get that stuff on there. bulky space in the back of the wings because they were just bulky wings. So what I think I want to do is continue the idea of the spikes that are pretty much already on the tail, but make them a little more pointy. That's the word I was looking for. So I'm just going to take some little clay and make them into little carroty type shapes. You want to see it closer? But like that little carroty shapes and place them all along so all alongside the back please words see here here's words there i'm gonna eat them now okay <coughs> which is also going to give us the opportunity to fix that little crack that's already on the dragon itself Since the sculpture is pretty flat, I really wanted to give a little bit of a texture, just kind of to pull things a little more interesting. I'm gonna add a little more texture to the body too, but this is what I'm doing right now. Actually, you know what? No, I don't like this. I'm just gonna put tiny little soicles instead so that look like scales. Yeah, I don't like you. Get, get out of here! I think that's better. When it comes to the feet, I absolutely- I CAN'T STAND THEM! I HATE THEM SO MUCH! Because they really just look like a seal. That's it. It's kind of like on the sides. When I think more than likely we would have one set of legs sticking on the outside and the other ones in the front would be kind of facing forward, maybe a little bit 45 degrees, not fully 90 degrees. So I'm really going to try my best to put some clay on there. And instead of giving it five, four toes in the front, which is weird already, I'm just going to stick to the classic three that I usually do for my dragons and or dinosaurs. <music> The angle of the feet are better, but because of the size and the way that they're made, I still feel like mine look like seal flippers, and there's no way I can modify them without them being even bigger, and then they're just going to look out of proportion, and then dishonor on me, and dishonor on my cow. But I really think this is the limit of what I could do with the feet. Gosh, they're ugly. Let me know what you would have done. Would you just transform them into flippers, but then it wouldn't match the face? <sighs> Alright, so this is going to go in for one last bake. I mean, hang on, I just need to keep talking about the feet. From far, it looks fine, but it's when you get closer that you're like, what's, like, what's going on? Alright, one last bake, which means put your hands together and pray to the baking gods. Dear baking gods of evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and fallen limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff!
later. Do you know what I think about the baking gods? I think they're being especially nice to me this week. Well, today. I don't know about the whole week, but we'll find out. So as you can see, our piece is in one piece. So the next thing that we're going to do is take some spray paint. Well, let me go get it. This thing over here. And I'm going to go ahead and give it one coat of primer. And what that's going to do is make sure that all our pieces, including the glass part, is going to accept when we start painting it. point that we need to add some color. However, I'm conflicted. So I really want to know what colors would you have done this dragon? Let me know in the comment section below. The two aesthetics I really want and probably want to do a hybrid of is probably Rainbow Dash because I love sky blue and I love rainbows. But I also like creatures of darkness. And the next one is this dragon over here by Bella Enchanted Studio. I absolutely love her dragons. If you want to check out her Instagram, I'll leave it in the description box below. And I really like the darkish blue with light colored accents. So I'm feeling I might end up in that direction with a little bit of gold as well. And so these are my weapon of choices. she is I absolutely love her she does kind of remind me of the color scheme of my first custom vinyl figure but let's just not worry about that for now I'm still not a fan of her little feet but it really was the best I could do with the shape that I was given I mean even if we look at it let's look at it side by side from before and after and you have to admit we came a long way from that derpy dino with the dino it wasn't even a dino it was a dragon with eyes that were fa facing forward. What the heck? And I'm particularly proud of the paint job. It does have a rainbow dashy type of feel. I didn't want the spikes to be entirely colored, just the tip. Wait. <laughs> Get your minds out of the gutter! And I have to say, for those of you who struggle with painting, getting an airbrush just levels you up from here to here. I'm not saying all the way there, but just it, it makes it that much better. Let me know in the comment section below which color scheme would you have chosen, and if you like to draw, heck, why not draw her down with the colors that you would have chosen? And hashtag me nerdycraft on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Alright, before you leave, hang on, wait! Time to announce the winners of the AirPods and the fake pods. So before the announcement, I want to let you grains know that part of me feels really bad because I want to give as many things as possible. There were well over 7,000 entries. If you didn't win, here's a part two. Next week, I will have another giveaway with more cool items. So stay tuned for those custom items because I think they're going to be pretty cool. So the winners are Heather O'Toole, Fiona Taylor, and from my members and Patreon list, Cynthia Massman. And for the real AirPods, Ellen 
Kelly Munich or Munich. If you were named, make sure that you check your inbox. There might be multiple of you with the same name. But if you get an email from me saying that you did win, I will be asking you for your mailing address. So please do stay tuned because I am already starting on the next customization for the giveaway also next week. Today's shoutouts go to Mariana Taylor, OP Pyrozen, Secretly Badger, Joe Debuhanto 101, who made this really cool drawing of me and all the other fandoms I have. So if you want to watch that video, I'll link it down below. If you want to shout out in my videos, don't forget to hashtag Notification Squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of a video's release or hashtag NerdyCraft on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook anytime with any of your creations. If you want to watch the previous craft video, check up here. And if you want to watch a review of Cash or Trash, check it out down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.